In today's episode. Remake the whole order? You got it. The free water cup that ended up not being free, a drive through tail. Well, if I'm not there at 9, why don't you break in and start without me? So let's get started. Remake the whole order? You got it. Worked at a crazy popular restaurant with a huge outdoor deck on the ocean, it was a river leading to the ocean, but as we said in the south at the time, don't let the truth get in the way of a good story. This place was right next to the cruise ship terminal, so we'd literally watch thousands of people disembark and hundreds head for our restaurant at the same time. Needless to say, we'd be packed with a line out the door at these times. A group of six comes in. And we want to sit on the ocean. Okay, you and everybody else. I tell them it's a 30 to 45 minute wait unless they want to eat indoors, which is quicker. They grumble, but they can see we're swamped and begrudgingly accept the pager I give them, insisting they need to sit on the ocean. You're willing to wait, no worries. I inform them that ticket times right now are currently higher than normal being that the cruise ship just dropped off hundreds of people. They say that's fine. Great, hang out over there and I'll buzz you. 20 minutes go by and a younger lady with long and curly red-headed hair from the group approaches me at the front desk, waving the pager around. Is this thing broken? This thing must be broken. We've been waiting an hour. Uh, no you haven't. We have OpenTable, a reservation system that tracks your status in real time. I spin the computer around to show her that, in fact, you've been here literally 21 minutes. And you're going to have to wait at least 10 to 20 more minutes. She throws a minor hissy fit in front of some other guests in the lobby, but they're definitely not on Team Merida. Back to the waiting area she goes. We get them sat at a picnic table on the front water, prime real estate. It was about 40 minutes from when I quoted her, so I had five to spare. The rest of her group is happy with the spot and looks hungry and ready to order. I motion over their server, Leah, and say let's get this order in quickly. Not good enough for her. She again complains that they waited an hour, nope, 40 minutes, and that they should get free appetizers at the very least. Now me, I will always admit a mistake on our part and make it right, but we quoted her, gave her the best table possible, and still came in under time. This is business as usual. But, sometimes I'm a nice guy and realize people are hangry, low blood sugar, and need some love. So I ask her have you ever had she crab soup? She looks bewildered and shakes her head. I say I'm gonna bring you some she crab soup. The group orders apps and entrees at the same time. Leah asks if they want her to bring it all together. No, no, they say bring the apps first, then fire the entrees. Leah does just that and it takes about 20 plus minutes for them to come up. Since we have a problem child, I run the apps personally. Put fried green tomatoes, crab cakes, and of course the delicious she crab soup on a tray. Run it out to them. Drop the apps on the table, and like a scene in the Matrix, I watch one of Brave's curly red 10 inch hairs slow emo fall from her own head into the bowl of soup I've just presented to her. She looks down and freaks the f asterisk 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 out. Your hair is in this soup. This is disgusting. You need to remake this entire order. Y'all. I'm bald. I shave my head every day. You could pluck your eyebrows while looking at the back of my head. As gently as I can, I tell her I watched her own flowing, luxurious lock fall into the soup and insist it's not mine. She is in an outrage, calling me a liar and insisting that I did this on purpose because I didn't like her. Ah. Uh. She demands I remake the entire order. The rest of the table is uncomfortable, sees she's in a mini-rage world, and insists it's fine, let's just eat. Me? Nope. Yes, ma'am. And I scoop everything off the table onto my tray. Apps, beverages, plates, silverware. Let's start over and hopefully we can get off on a new foot. By the way, I mentioned that ticket times were long as the cruise ship just docked, so it may be a while to get a new course of appetizers to you. We'll do our best, as busy as we are. I'll have some new beverages out to you as soon as Leah slows down. 
I go into my kitchen and tell my slammed sous chef Brian that I needed a refire on that ticket. He is a loud and angry dude and initially screams at me but on the plus side, he's also incredibly vindictive, so when I tell him this one's about sending a message, he smiles and puts the ticket at the end of the line. Two hours later, the table finished and left Leah a 30% tip, guess who didn't pay the bill? Worst part of the story, she never got to try the she-crab soup. The free water cup that ended up not being free, a drive through tail. I just went and picked up some food from a chain I worked at briefly years ago, which reminded me of this story. I hated that job but I still love their food. I was working the drive through when a regular customer drove up. He was a catty and rude fellow who worked at the mall next door, so I had dealt with him enough to know that he was a jerk and to not even bother trying to give excellent customer service, because he was just not a friendly person. He gave his order, which included a cup of water. No problem. Sure thing. We prepared his food, bagged it, and I started to pour his water. He got to the window and started fussing at me immediately because he needs a bigger water than that, that cup is tiny and useless, and I have to have a bigger cup. Let's talk about our cups for a moment. I assume you all know that a fountain soda machine is extremely inexpensive to run and is highly profitable. It costs about 4 to 7 cents to fill a cup. Drinks cost money because the cup itself can cost more than the beverage itself. Our soda cups came in small, medium, and large. Then we had a free water cup, which held about one cup, about 230 milliliters. It's small, I won't lie. But it was free, and I get wanting to minimize food costs from a business perspective. I start explaining to him that the free water cups are this size, but he interrupts me before I can tell him that I can go ahead and give him water in one of the bigger cups, which I did on a fairly regular basis, and starts yelling at me about how stupid that is and how he will pay for a bigger cup. Malicious compliance time. But first, let's talk again about our cups. The small was big. Medium was bigger. The large was a swimming pool. Seriously seriously, it's a giant cup. It cost about $2.50. He didn't say what size he wanted, only that he'd pay for a bigger cup. I grabbed the large cup, added the cost to his total, and stared at him, while the water laboriously trickled out of the spigot into his cup. The machine had very low water pressure without the carbonation, so it took a while to fill up. It was nearly full when I made a mistake. I swore I did not mean to do this, but I accidentally got the cup too close to the spigot next to the waters, and a giant splash of dark-colored cola ended up in that very nearly full water. I looked at him, said oops, poured it out, and started over. The time dragged. Oh how he glared at me. I had to try so hard not to laugh or look smug. It was awfully difficult. He was so rude and impatient, and if he hadn't have been, I would have just given him the damn water in a bigger cup. And all that time wouldn't have been wasted. Whatever. He deserved it. Have a glorious day, Reddit. Cheers. Well, if I'm not there at 9, why don't you break in and start without me? A few years ago in rural Australia there was a small empty government office building and Gary, a government department manager. The building had been vacant for about eight months while committee after committee tried to decide what they were going to do with it. Gary was the manager of the infrastructure department, which was responsible for the upkeep and any modifications to the building. Gary was not an efficient manager. One of his favorite sayings was flick me an email, which was strange, because outwardly, he didn't seem to ever read them. He also had this knack of never being on time for an appointment. Not many construction industry people I spoke with seemed to take joy in dealing directly with Gary. Where we could, we'd go though everyone else in the department to get stuff done, so Gary became known as Speed Bump. Something to be avoided if you could. Now, because I'm an electrical contractor who wears a few different hats, has been to a number of different rodeos over the years, and is afflicted with the curse of competency, I got roped into assisting Speed Bump with this building's future use. He asked for a 9 a.m. meeting at his office one day to discuss the building. Arriving at the outer reception 10 minutes early, I asked Jen the receptionist to let him know I was there. 
Jen comes back to me and says, Gary's running late. He said to wait for him. About 30 minutes later I asked Jen to remind him I was waiting. After a couple of phone calls Jen says, I can't get through to him in his office or on mobile. His office thinks he's left the building. No one knows where he is. I guess a reasonable person would have just called it quits and left at that point, or called slash emailed him, or left a message with Jen or something. But I was sick of Gary's shit. I'd learned ages ago that one way to help people with their timekeeping skills was through their wallet. So I went out to my work vehicle, got my laptop and a bottle of water, then went back into the reception area and set up camp in a corner. I'd planned an office day anyway to work on quotations and project planning, so Gary could pay me to to do it. My charge out rate at the time was $110 an hour. Seven and a half hours of very productive spite fueled work later, I called Gary on his mobile, got message bank, and left a message saying I waited for him and maybe we should reschedule. The next meeting was arranged for two days later, on site at the empty building at 9 am. During the phone call to arrange this, I lightly mocked speed bump by asking if he meant 9 am human time or Gary time. He may have thought we'd built some kind of convivial rapport and was just being funny when he said, well, if I'm not there at 9, why don't you break in and start without me? I was on site 10 minutes early and waited until 9.05 to put the battery in my angle grinder. The stainless steel security mesh over the window made a satisfying sound being cut. After duct taping the whole window, the hammer tapping the glass edges was less satisfying. The best sound that day, after gaining entry, was the security system siren. I was outside having a smoke with the security response guard when Gary turned up. The wind kinda left his complainy sails when I shrugged and said, well, you did say. I'd like to close this tale by saying that Gary learned from my interactions with him. But, as you'll probably know, speed bumps don't change. You either have to just go around them, deal with them, or remove them. And Gary just continued being a speed bump for some time to come. I didn't cop any serious shit over the 7.5 hour invoice or the damage. However, Gary did delegate one of his staff to work directly with me a lot more after this. It was a small win, but you have to savor those, I reckon. Thanks for watching.